Last time on Delightful Travelers, we said goodbye to our home in Thailand. We so enjoyed our time in the country, but sadly, it's time to move on. In this video, we return to Vietnam. We were here last year, and we just knew we had to come back to see more of this beautiful country. I'm Anna, and this is Trevor. In this mini-series, we'll be exploring the south of Vietnam. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the like button so you don't miss a single video. A huge thanks to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Xin chào, Vietnam. I'm on my way now. I'm on my way now. I'm on my way now. Well, it is official. We are back in Vietnam. Let us welcome you to Ho Chi Minh City. Last year we came to Vietnam, but we did not get down to the south. But we did fall in love with this country immediately and knew we had to get to Ho Chi Minh City. So here we are. So while we're here in the south of Vietnam, we plan on doing four videos. And for those of you that followed us over from Thailand, don't worry, we are going back there after Vietnam. And this place we're standing in is beautiful. You have a very big statue that way with some enormous buildings, huh? Yeah, so this is kind of like one of the main squares here in the city. And then right behind me is, I guess, City Hall here in Ho Chi Minh. Do us a favor, guys. If you're excited that we're back in Vietnam, hit the like button because that really helps us out. A lot of you watched when we were here last year in the north. So now we're in the south in this massive city. And what a start right here, smack dab in the center. So we are starting things out in District 1, which is the central part of Ho Chi Minh City. And this is a massive, massive city. It is the biggest city, in fact, in Vietnam. There's about 9 million people in the city itself and about 15 million when you account for all the surrounding areas. It's just so huge. It is not, however, the capital of Vietnam. That is Hanoi. You guys, look at this place. It's absolutely beautiful. You got this massive fountain behind me. You got the crazy traffic of Ho Chi Minh City and you got the sky rises. Now, if there's anything you might have heard about this place is that it has two different names. There's Saigon, you probably heard of that one. And there's Ho Chi Minh City. Now Ho Chi Minh City is the official name. Saigon was the name before the war. And coming in here, we just weren't sure if it was like, should we say politically correct to call it Saigon. We, we were just saying Ho Chi Minh City, Ho Chi Minh City. But feet on the ground, what we hear all the Vietnamese people and all the signs say, Saigon. So you can call it Saigon as well. Speaking of Ho Chi Minh, there's actually a statue of Ho Chi Minh behind us. He was actually the president of North Vietnam from 1949 to 1969. I got some facts off the internet for you. Uh, he was one of the most influential communist leaders here of the 20th century. So one thing we didn't expect coming into Saigon was just how pretty the city is. There's so many different colonial buildings mixed in with the giant skyscrapers. I love it. One thing we did expect when we came in was the sheer amount of traffic. <laughs> yeah. We had prepared ourselves. We've been to Hanoi and people actually told us that it's actually is worse here in Saigon and I don't know that's debatable but their traffic yeah. is pretty crazy. It's really fun to compare this city to Hanoi and by the way if you guys didn't know and we already said it in the video we have been in Vietnam before so if it's your first time here maybe we'll link to the playlist but why don't we try to show them a little bit of the traffic. All right well this is just a little taste of it huh? Yeah something to prepare yourself for is even when you're at a crosswalk people <laughs> don't stop for you. Well, let's try to nudge you yourself just out. Have to nudge. So you kind of go we're nudging our way no, not stopping, not stopping, not stopping, not stopping. Let's go. Thank you. There we well, go. Well, that's kind of how that's it is. how you have to do it. Everywhere you go, it's like that, huh? It's true. <laughs> Take a look at this beautiful building. Believe it or not, it's not a train station, which would have been my first guess if we were just walking by, but it's actually the Saigon Central Post Office. <laughs> A post office. I know, who knew? That is definitely not what I expected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's really cool about this is it's one of the main things to do in the city. So let's go in and check it out. Besides the fact that this is over the top beautiful inside, something else really cool that you can do here, you can come and buy a postcard and then send it home. <laughs> How cool is that? So yeah, there's you can see people. people behind here like writing a postcard. Yeah. Now this is unique. First time we've ever seen this. Yeah, I wonder how much it costs to actually send a postcard from <laughs> Vietnam to Canada. There are so many different postcards to choose from here. There's also tons of different souvenirs. So it's not just about this beautiful space that you can come into. Now question for you guys. Have you ever seen a more beautiful post office in the world? I challenge you. Leave us a comment below and let us know. Also what's cool right next to us here, these are like 
phone booths or something like that. And there's like a whole lot of them. These are unique as well. So this beautiful building was constructed between 1886 and 1891. It is in the Gothic Renaissance and French style. And a fun little fact for you, this building is often attributed as being designed by Gustave Eiffel, the guy that designed the Eiffel Tower in Paris. However, it was a totally different French architect that designed this building. Well, you know us, we are hungry already and we stopped in to get one of these delicious things. I'm sure some of you know what this is. If you don't, this is a Bon Mi sandwich and they're one of our favorite sandwiches in the entire world. We had them last time we were in Vietnam. Uh, but more in the north and a little bit of the middle but this time now that we're in the south we just had to try them yeah and i think we're told that banh mi sandwiches come actually originally originated here in the south exactly so, because we're doing being a little bit more authentic by having it down here however uh, it's raining off and on a little bit and we're going to go to the super famous place that's highly highly recommended it's like the number one place to get banh mi's here in the city but i'm not sure they had an inside so we were a little bit worried about getting rained on so we found this cute little spot a little bit more, I would say, it's, higher it's end. Higher end, a little more pricey. It doesn't matter. We're just going to try this guy. I'll go first. I have a pork shoulder pork bomb, belly. or pork belly one. You're right. I was eyeing the pork shoulder, but let's just go, guys. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff right there. The sauce we chose for this is called spicy garlic, and it has a kick. I love it with the pork on this in general. It also said the pork was kind of soaked in coconut water. Ooh. That's interesting on its own, but um, the thing that we always love about these is the bread. Vietnam knows how to do these kind of baguette sandwiches. This bread is awesome. What did you get? I went for it chicken. There were a couple of different chicken options. I went for the lemongrass chicken. Also got that spicy garlic sauce. I see some herbs on there. There might be some red chilies. Yikes. <laughs> and maybe some cucumber as well. Wow, so yours sounds entirely different than mine. You go ahead and try it. I'll hold this up so they can kind of see the stuff while Anna's uh, trying it out. It looks good. It smells good. Mm -hmm. question is, <laughs> that's a good sign, my friends. Wow, that is so good. It's definitely worth paying a little bit extra to come here and try this. The chicken is absolutely mm. tender. With lots of herbs in there. Like It's not, definitely not just lemongrass that it's soaked in. Uh, definitely some like spices. I want to say like turmeric or cumin or something like that because it's got loads of flavor. Get the extra herbs on there. That sauce, that chili or I guess it's spicy garlic sauce is incredible. This is one of the best banh mi's that I've ever had. Yeah, I just love that we're still sitting. I one out, bite. <laughs> we're sitting outside. You can kind of hear the traffic behind us. The camera set up right here in front of us. I'll show you a clip of that. This is awesome. We're so happy to be back in Vietnam. Well, maybe one of the reasons our food was so expensive is because it's literally right beside this, which is one of the biggest tourist attractions here in District 1 in Saigon. This is the Notre Dame Cathedral. I think it was actually built or designed after a smaller Notre Dame in Paris. But as you can see, it's under construction. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's really under construction. It's almost like a piece of art. There's that much scaffolding on there. I know, huh? yeah. <laughs> So there's not many people, it looks closed. Definitely closed. Not many people going up there, but it's still a thing to do. So the post office was right there. We ate kind of over that way, but it's still really pretty here, huh? It is a really pretty spot. They have lots of flowers and things, lots of traffic around as well as you can probably hear and see. So this cathedral was constructed between 1863 and 1880, and it got us wondering a little bit more about religion here. We don't talk about religion on the channel ever, but it is kind of interesting. We went to Google just to kind of look a few things up, and I'll just quickly go through them, because I think you might find it interesting as well. In 2010, there was a study, most of the Vietnamese people practiced exclusively folk religions, 45.3%, 16.4% of the population were Buddhists, I thought there would be more, 8.2% were Christians, so that's interesting given there's all kinds of these cathedrals around the country, and about 30% were unaffiliated to any religion at all, so atheists. So right next to the cathedral and the post office, you're going to find Book Street, which in theory could potentially be my favorite street in the whole world. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, she's a, a big reader. So this is right up her alley, but I don't know if we've ever come across a Book Street on our travels. Have you guys ever seen a Book Street I know, on I travels? love this idea. Yeah, it's really neat. There's lots of different shops here, way more than I thought. When you told me there was a Book Street, I was expecting yes. like five shops. So what I read about it is basically like a whole bunch of bookshops, 
some coffee shops, and book publishers all together on one street. Found someone eyeing some books. What's over uh, here? These, I'm pretty sure, are all in Vietnamese, so probably not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder, though, what are you reading? I'm sure some of them wonder what you're reading as well. Ooh. A lot of the time, honestly, I read a lot of just, like, YA and a lot of fluffy things. I think because we're so busy all the time, and sometimes I just want to, like, sit on the beach and read something really easy and really mindless. But I did read a book recently called I Must Betray You. It actually takes place in Romania. I do actually sometimes like to read historical fiction. This was kind of YA, sort of. Um, but it takes place in Romania during right before the revolution. So it was really, really interesting to read about a place that we've been before. Of course, it was uh, fiction, but historical fiction is always fun. Seeing all these coffee shops is making us want some caffeine, but we're not going to stop into this one that you see now. We're going to take you over to an entirely different part of the city. We're going over to District 2. It's so different than here. We can't wait to show you. Welcome to District 2. It is much more mm -hmm. quiet and tranquil over here. You wouldn't even think you're in the middle of the city still. Yeah, so there are some busy streets, but nothing yep. compared to District 1. But then you have these quaint little side streets. I don't mm -hmm. even know if you can call them. They're almost alleys. They're very They're narrow. They're really, really narrow, <laughs> really, really beautiful as well. Yeah, now, we really wanted to stay in this area because we did start out in District 1 by staying over there. Yeah. And it was just a little busy for us. We, we just came from there and we like it over but there. But it's a great way if you, you know, it's your first time to Saigon, which is what is for us. But we spent a few days over there. You get to be acquainted. You get to see yeah. all the like the touristy stuff and really see the center of the city. But then you get to come over here and see a totally different side. So you'll probably notice it's really green here. Oh, we got a, a vehicle going by. It is a little challenging with cars. We've been down here with a grab a couple of times. They do manage to do it, but it's definitely a tight squeeze. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like if I laid down and put my arms out, I'd mostly cover up the entire street. Yeah, and then you get scooters mixed in, and someone usually has to back up or move out of the way. So it's a little a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Before we show you more of what's around here, we feel like we need a little pick-me-up, and we're so stoked to be back in Vietnam, mainly for the Vietnamese coffee. That might be the reason and the only reason we came back. Oh, the only reason. <laughs> one of them, but it's a major one. We love the coffee in Vietnam. We found a coffee shop, and one thing we love about Vietnam is just the abundance of different types of coffees that you can get. It definitely has some of the best like range of coffees. This one is a coconut coffee, and it's made with like basically ice, so it's almost blended like a slushy. There's coconut milk in there, and there is, of course, coffee. I can't even begin to tell you guys how delicious this is. It's a travesty that this is not made it outside of Vietnam. I've literally never seen one on a menu anywhere else. Maybe there is one somewhere, but I've never seen it. It's so cold. It's almost like hard on the teeth because it's so cold, but delicious, especially on a day like today where it's I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm dripping in sweat. It's quite humid, a little bit hot, but the coffee is absolutely perfect. There might be sweet, sweet and condensed milk in it. There is, that seems to come in a lot of uh, different types of Vietnamese coffee, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's in there, but really what you taste is just a great combo of coconut and coffee. Mm. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna call it right now. This might be the best coffee I ever had. It's just so interesting and so unique. It's so good on a hot, hot day. Absolutely love Vietnamese coffee, you guys. Now, here's the thing, we have to bring this up. If you're following along in our whole travel lives <laughs> and on our channel, you might know that we've been talking a lot lately about living in places. We've been spending a couple months at a time in some places. Sometimes we just max out as many days as we're allowed on our passports to be in a certain country. But here in, in Saigon, in District 2, I'll tell you, this is a place I think we could live for, I'll say a month, I'm sure you can extend your visa, but the maximum we get, I think it's like 30 days when we get that visa. But there's something about this place, it's a perfect balance of like things to do, there's restaurants, cafes, fast internet so we can work and we can still easily get to different parts of the city. So, so far, this has it all and we're really itching to do some kind of big city living at some point. So far we've been living on islands throughout the world and that's been awesome but one of these times we're going to have to just kind of stay put in a city for a while. We're now up at our uh, favorite area of District 2. I think it's official. We found the Brooklyn of Saigon, huh? I think I think we have. It's very, very trendy street. Yeah. Actually, it's not the best walking street in the world but nope. there's not too much traffic. <laughs> There's not really any sidewalks. There, You're going to come across so many cool places. Yeah, there's absolutely everything here from like craft breweries, there's different coffee shops, jewelry stores, boutique 
pet shops, you name it, it seems to be here. Yeah, right beside us there's uh, American comfort food. <laughs> American comfort food, there you go. They've got it all. <laughs> so we can say we entirely came across this place by recommendation of Vietnamese people. So we want to thank you guys for helping us out. We love it when you guys leave us comments and recommendations. And when we get to meet you in person and you tell us, you know, you should go to this area because that's how we found this place. Then we started looking on a map and literally I started like finding all these restaurants and coffee shops and like craft beer places and I had all the, you should just look at my map on Google Maps because it's got all these like little flags all over the place. It had all the ingredients <laughs> of the things we like. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out already, this is the kind of expat area of the city. District 2 is where most of the foreigners are and yeah. they work here. <laughs> and of course you're going to find Vietnamese, well, loads of Vietnamese people here too, but it's, I think it's where the expats seem to congregate as well. The place we're staying at here is called Sen Boutique House and it is a gorgeous little boutique style apartment complex. You can see our room now, it's absolutely perfect. It has everything that we absolutely need and the best part is it's only a 10 minute walk from where we are right now and this is the spot we keep coming back to. We take you guys to it but that's why I put the b-roll on the screen just now because we'd have to walk back and then walk back here again but you get the idea. As always you, you guys usually ask us where we're staying. We'll put the link in the description if you want to stay there. Get this, it's only like $40 a night to stay there in that beautiful place when you have all this right here. So I think we're probably gonna sign it off here. There are a lot of craft beer places and if you know us, you know <laughs> that how much we love craft beer. So we're probably gonna hop in there, figure out where to eat. There's yep. also like some great Mexican restaurants around. Like there I can't get over how cool this, how awesome this neighborhood is. Now before anyone gets mad at us for going to eat some Mexican food, don't worry. <laughs> in the next video coming up, we're going out on a Vietnamese street food tour at night all over the city. We cannot wait, cannot wait to share the video with you guys. Yeah, huh? I think that might, there might be some fun surprises coming up in that video too. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's gonna be a lot. Now, if you guys got this far in the video, it's Trevor and Anna, delightful travelers. We're, we hope you're excited for this four part series in Vietnam. We're so stoked to be back here. We got some big, big ideas. And then after that, as we said, we're gonna be back in Thailand again. So stick around for yes. that because we're gonna be visiting perhaps some different areas this time and hopefully we'll have better weather. And the most important thing, hit subscribe, click the like button, share the video, heck, leave us a comment, just let us know what you thought. But for now, it's off to get some food. All right guys, that's it. From Saigon, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.